the workshop. And we'll start with uh, Timoteo Carletti again. Yeah. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Serco. Thank you to everybody to be there this morning. So yes, yes I'm again Teo Carletti from the University of Namur in Belgium. And I work in the uh, Namur Institute of Complex Systems. So I will not introduce myself because I already did on Wednesday. And so I would like just to thank again the organizer for the opportunity to give these talks and for the organization of this uh, uh, workshop. And then I would like to thank two colleagues of mine, Ginesta Bianconi and Lorenzo Giambaldi. Uh, Ginesta is from Queen Mary University in London, also associated to the Alan Turing Institute. And Lorenzo uh, just finished his thesis with uh, myself in Amur and a colleague of mine in Florence in Italy. And now he's moving to machine learning stuff because uh, he's his dear wife. <laughs> and what I present to you is a part of uh, this paper that appeared last year in uh, PRL uh, 2023. And so it will be about uh, uh, global topological synchronization on simplicial cell complexes. So if you if you want to just uh, the take home message. So assume we have a two membrane that vibrate, so two triangular membrane, and they are in contact through one edge, one leak. And so the idea is uh, how to understand how the vibration of one membrane is transferred to the other and vice versa. Or if you want, assume you have uh, some solid, again, a, a, a tetrahedron, so a pyramid, and you have some gases or some liquid inside these pulses, uh, and assume that the, the wall of this uh, pyramid are membrane that can vibrate. So the idea is that how the vibration inside is transferred to the, to the membrane, that because they share a link, is transferred to the close by membrane. So it's the idea to have signals, not on nodes of the network, but on the higher order structure, they say surfaces or volumes uh, having higher order structure. OK, but before to, to go to this uh, high order, I have a short introduction about uh, what is synchronization and synchronization network. So maybe uh, at the end of the week, you already uh, hear maybe a lot of time synchronization or what is synchronization. So we'll find some redund redundancy with the, the work, the talk by Stefano Boccaletti, for instance, or even mine on the other talk that we saw in this day. So synchronization is the, the following idea. Uh, if you think of your heart, then it's... Oh, sorry. It was too fast. So if you think of your heart, it's made by cells, muscle cells, that uh, they oscillate, uh, they, they, they pulse. And if they do not pulse in some synchronous way, then they will not able to compress the muscle and then push the, the blood in your, in your body, and then you can live. So in, in case you don't, these cells are not able to do this work, so they're not synchronized, or they synchronize too fast, then you have some problem. You, you can have fibrillation, and then you need a pacemaker, so really a clock, a mechanical sorry, electromechanical clock. Or you can have a fireflies, you cannot see too, because I think uh, the video is better. Okay, no, maybe. So, okay, all right. I don't know why they start at the same time. Let me stop. So you have the fireflies that uh, Marcel already presented, and someone told that uh, any talk with synchronization should have a slide with fireflies, so I put a slide with fireflies. And then, okay, you cannot see very well, but here you have two phenomena. You have spatial synchronization and time synchronization, because you can see a wave of the lights of uh, flashing fireflies. Then you have uh, your, your brain that also is a matter of synchronization because uh, each neuron is not uh, strong enough to send a signal to the muscle or whatever in your body. And then they have to synchronize in patches, so in groups, and send a stronger message. And the last one, it is, uh, I think also someone had presented, uh, is the clapping. In the beginning, uh, each one clap its, its own pace, but listen to the neighborhood, they start to clap at the synon. At some point, you will have just a unique clap. If I go, okay, everybody's clapping together. But there is no maestro like in orchestra that uh, tells them to do this. This is automatic. So in uh, any theater, well, at the end, there should be this kind of phenomenon if the clapping is long enough. Okay. And I think it has already been said that the original idea of synchronization has been studied by Huygens, so a Dutch physicist, that studies this kind of odd sympathy that clock on the wall, they start to be in phase or even in antiphases. And you can find this kind of video on YouTube where you have these metronomes they put on this horizontal bar, and they start to communicate the vibration each one through the ground, and then because of the 
of the cans, they, they can uh, uh, say oscillate. And at some point, they will you will see really visually that uh, all the, the metronomes will be in phase. Let me go a bit faster. OK, you're already there. They are all oscillating in phase, while at the beginning, they did not do uh, this kind of stuff. Okay, so this is a re the, the framework is an oscillator that can be regular or chaotic one. If that, if you take each one separately, they each one will have its own pace. But when you couple in some good way, they they exhibit this global behavior. This is called synchronization. So just to remember that uh, I think this is already has been seen in the past in the past days. So the Kuramoto mode, which is the the model for synchronization is not exactly what I'm doing here. Because in the Kuramoto model, in principle, each oscillator has its own frequency, which is drawn from some distribution. They normally is uh, uh, symmetric with respect to zero. But you can have very different frequencies in principle. So this is not the case. Because in the Kuramoto model, you can have ever global synchronization. You can have a synchronization in the sense that if you measure the order parameter that you already saw this day, it can be very large. So here it looks like one, but it's not one. Indeed, if you look for the plot where you have a time and here the, the phases of the oscillator, you have a vertical line. So the color means the uh, same number in some sense. You have a vertical line, but with some defect, if you want. So they are, these are oscillators that are not in phase at all. So, but if you compute R, and if N is large enough, this number is close to 1. While if you are not synchronized, you can this kind of patchy uh, picture, and you can see that the R is very small. So, but this is not the framework in which I'm working. Otherwise, I have to take all the frequencies equal. It is a, a very special case of the Kuramoto model that I will not be interested in. OK. So here, the framework is the global synchronization. And the main paper that uh, you have to look at if you are interested are the one by Pecora and collaborator that they start in 1990. Yeah, 1990. And then there are several other papers. I just put the three, I think, uh, most interesting, but there are really a lot of paper in the same group, but a lot of people who spread in the world, where they study the synchronization of a chaotic system first, then they introduce this master stability formalism, which is really the main tool to understand uh, how global synchronization can emerge, and then they study this uh, behavior on uh, uh, couples, so on network in some sense. So they are really the starting point if you want to to study this uh, global synchronization on, uh, on networks. OK, so let me put the, the ground. So you have uh, one dynamical system, your preferred one, that exhibits some oscillation. Oscillation, I mean something that does not go to a stationary solution. So it can be a repeat chaotic, or it can be a limit cycle, or whatever you want. Then you take a, a, a bunch of them, say n, a small n, and each oscillator can be described by some vector in some d-dimensional space. And then uh, just to label each oscillator with some index i, I have uh, n times the same equation. But now this interesting part is when once you couple them with some idea, they can be spring, they can be in the case of uh, Marcello and the Fairfly's uh, light signals, they can be almost whatever you want. And then you end up with this uh, very general structure where you have the isolated system plus sigma is uh, some coupling term, strength. A, I, J tells you is the adjacent symmetrics of the net, also tells you if I and J are connected or not. Here in my talk, I will only consider uh, undirected networks. So if I'm connected to you, you are connected to me, there is no, uh, there is no directionality. And uh, I assume I, J to be equal to 1 or 0. So there are no weight at all. And then you have some coupling function that depends on the state of, of variable I and J. Of course, this is uh, the most general, but maybe too general to do something. And so one has to introduce some uh, assumption on G. The most uh, used one is that G is the, is can be written as the difference of uh, one function H evaluated on the state J A, and the state I. This is called diffusible-like, because if H is the identity, this is uh, the thick diffusion, so something that try, try to equalize the differences. Uh, but you can take uh, any nonlinear function, and, and it's OK. Uh, the goal of this function is that uh, once uh, you plug inside, you end up with uh, the matrix L, which is the Laplace matrix associated to the network. And this is important because this means that once uh, i and j, so xi and xj are equal, this function vanishes. And this means that uh, you can have a synchronization. Because if this function g will never vanish when uh, x i x j are equal. You cannot even speak about synchronization. Okay, so you can think. Uh, I think the Stefano make the point. Uh, you can have any function g such that x 
at g of x, x is equal to 0. So a function which is called neutral in some sense, that is, is vanishes once all the, the, the terms inside are equal. Or you can have a function g of a difference of the state. This is only variation on, on the same idea. So then the important point is that now this, the evolution of the state xi is given by this function. Then we want to study global synchronization. This is, you, you assume you have some reference orbit, so the orbit you're interested in to see if, 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 if it can be globally uh, produced, which is the solution of this the isolated system. Okay? So each uh, uh, oscillator is capable to have this kind of solution. And so the question is, is it possible that all xi are equal to s for all t uh, for all i? So this is the global synchronization. So the first step is to prove that this is actually a solution of the coupled system. Just plug this information in your equation. And as I told you Wednesday, so the Laplace matrix admit 1, 1, 1, 1, and 0 as eigenvalue, eigenvectors. So this means that this function vanishes once you put xi equal to s. And then you have that, of course, this is nothing but the s over the t equal f of s, which is the solution from which you start. So this is true that this, this is a solution of the global system. OK? So, yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is really global. So the all the all so if you have your system this is described by phases and angle, everything should be equal all across all the system. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's, it's, so this is not the case of uh, uh, where you can have phase synchronization, but not to the amplitude or something like this. Okay, so I will show after a model where in principle you can have both amplitude and phase, but for the parameter that I choose, you have both again phase and amplitude synchronization. Okay, uh, okay so now the question is that this solution exists, but is it stable? Because it is, if it is not stable, you cannot convert it over this solution. Okay, so to study the stability is the same idea of the Turing pattern that I show you on. Uh, on Wednesday, indeed, there are two phases of the same coin, and people took a lot of time to realize that uh, indeed uh, what uh, one f defined as the um, uh, relation dispersion in the Turing case, so the Lyapunov exponent, is noted but the, the mass stability function defined by Pegas. So, but I will show you in the next slide. So what you take, you, 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 you take the difference, so a small displacement from uh, the solution exactly with respect to the reference one that you call delta, uh, you, you make a first order the expansion of your system, and then you, you end up with JF, which is the Jacobian, so the derivative of the function F evaluated on the, on the solution S. And then you have the same stuff, it is the Jacobian, so the derivative, if you want, of the, fu of the coupling function evaluated on S. So this is a linear but time dependent system. And you want to study the stability. Pay attention also, this is a huge system because if, uh, so you have as many equations as i, so n. So if you have a, a network with uh, one million of nodes, this is a one million times one million metric. So it can be difficult to study the stability, which after all, it just compute again the Lyapunov, uh, the Lyapunov exponent of this uh, equation and show that the real part is negative. Okay, but then there's this idea of uh, Pecora and collaborators. The matrix S is symmetric because I assume the network to be uh, un undirected. And then he admits uh, an eigenbasis, phi alpha, with the eigenvalues lambda alpha, that are orto uh, orthogonal. And there are, moreover, because of this assumption that I put on L, they are uh, negative except the first one, which is zero. Okay, and then uh, you, uh, you decompose uh, your solution delta xi on this special basis, so you just make a change of basis, and then you project your equation on this basis, and you realize that you obtain, as also Stefano Boccaletti showed, that uh, you have the same equation where you replace the, the matrix L with the scalar, lambda. Lambda alpha are the eigenvalues of the, uh, of the Laplace matrix. So once you change uh, eigenvalues, you only change one parameter. So you have one, fam one parameter family of equation that now are small because they are of the dimension of your system. If your system is two-dimensional, this is a two by two matrix, so much easier to study analytically. And so the idea is to determine the Lyapunov exponent of this uh, uh, equation that is uh, called small lambda. It is also called the mass stability function. So it is the, the largest Lyapunov exponent of this uh, matrix that now depends again on time as a function of capital lambda that 
that are the eigenvalues of the Laplace matrix. So there are two important points here. First of all, uh, the huge matrix now is a small one, so computational effort has reduced. The second one, any network that you can use has been captured by a spectrum. So if you take two networks that, that are isospectral, so they have the same spectrum, they will also have the same dynamics because uh, they are just uh, captured here by the, the spectrum. Okay, so this is also an important point, some universality. Okay, so this is the model that I'm interested in. This is the, the Stuart Landau model. This is, is uh, I think, uh, is more general that the, than the uh, Kuramoto because you can have here both amplitude and phase oscillation. Uh, this is also a normal form for an op bifurcation. So any nonlinear system close to the op bifurcation can be described by changed variable in this way. So you have a linear part and then you have a cubic nonlinearity, which is enough to describe the, the fact that you pass from a, a fixed point to a limit cycle and then this uh, uh, attracting limit cycle. Okay? And the, the size of the limit cycle can be computed by the parameter A that are here. And so the, if I now I'm interested in uh, n coupled uh, uh, Stuart Landau oscillator, I take again, this is my f, this is the evolution of the, va the state variable on each node. And then I had a, here some coupling, where again you have the um, coupling, the adjacency matrix, some parameter mu, which is the strength that can be a comp complex number because now I'm in the complex framework. And again you take a function, which is the difference of or so a function g, which is the, uh, the, the a function h evaluated into different uh, nodes. Here, for example, I will take the function h, h to be the modulus of z times power m minus 1 times z. So if m is equal to 1, you have a linear coupling, so again, standard diffusion in some sense. But if m is larger than 1 uh, or, or smaller, you have some new uh, coupling, nonlinear coupling, that uh, can uh, so make a change the phases with, with the amplitude. Okay, so once you do this, you put this uh, on, uh, on the network. Here's a network which is a bit special because it's composed of, uh, by four benches or nodes uh, tightly connected among them, uh, with a smaller connection uh, uh, among the groups. I compute the Lyapunov exponent, so the mass stability function. And you can see that the spectrum, uh, I just put one value, the other values are over there, is here. So here, the, there is a, a real, there is a, sorry, a, a negative values with real part positive, so this cannot synchronize because the solution is unstable. And indeed, once you look at the real part of my variable that now is uh, omega uh, w in the previous slide was uh, z, z, sorry, in times, you see that you synchronize in, in each uh, group of nodes, but you're not globally synchronized. So this is because of the structure of the network. If I now change a bit the network, so I uh, add more links among the groups, so there are still four groups, but they're more connected be, uh, among them, then in I compute again the relation dispersed, so the, the mass stability, now all the spectrum is negative except zero, zero because you have a limit cycle. Once every time you have a limit cycle, you have zero, uh, a positive if you have some uh, chaotic system. And then you can see that uh, across all the nodes, you have a desynchronization. This vertical line means that uh, all the phases here, all the real part of uh, the variable are at the same time and the same value. And you can see visually that uh, all, uh, all the nodes now synchronize, oscillate with the same pace. Okay, good. Now, uh, w what one can do, one can generalize this to, uh, uh, to time-varying network. So uh, the idea is, this, is the same as before. Instead of having, having a, a, a fixed network, you have a, a network that evolves in time. So the Laplace matrix evolves in time. But you assume that it's still a Laplace matrix, a symmetric one. Then you have the existence of a game basis. And then you, th that now depends on time. And then you project on this uh, uh, new basis. What is, is important now is that you have to take into account how the eigenvectors that vary in time how, they, how can they be um, projected on the basis? It is uh, introduced an extra term in your mass stability function, which is uh, how really the evolution, the matrix C is the matrix that tells you how the evolution of the game vector are. And what is interesting here, I just give you this example for again the Stuart Landau. Here in, uh, uh, in red, I plot the, uh, the, um, the mass stability function for the static network. So this means that uh, if uh, you have, a, in, as a function of epsilon, the, the, the strength of the cup. So this means that uh, if I put epsilon somewhere here, then uh, the system will not synchronize on the static network. While if I put epsilon here, then the system will synchronize. But if you look, this is the, the same curve, but for the time varying. So in this case, the, the curve is more on the left. 
This means that it's easier to synchronize on a time varying network instead of the fixed one. Okay, so this is for a, a small network that is uh, really three nodes uh, where links are just to silly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the network is the same that uh, I I had on Wednesday is uh, three nodes. It's just a simple example to and uh, each uh, each links oscillate like a cosinus function. Uh, they, so I don't remember exactly, but uh, something like this. So these are the three links. No, no, sorry, this is the master stability function. So this is the, the largest Lyapunov exponent as a function of the coupling. So I, I take my, my system. Uh, okay, so the, the, the network depends on time. So the, the coupling is the strength of the coupling. So this is uh, what in the... Uh, no, no, so, so, yeah, if you want. So here yeah, what I'm saying is that uh, uh, my system is uh, so some fxi plus epsilon, some j, l, i, j, t, some coupling h. h. So here is the time dependent. So this is epsilon, this is strength. This is a, 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 not a, something that you can turn, but it's fixed. Okay? So here, th this time variance is the fact that uh, these links uh, can oscillate in time, so okay, yeah, it's, true. it's okay that you have a weighted network in some sense. But what I'm interested here is uh, the, the importance of this factor. Okay, so I if you fix uh, the, the network in the standard, for instance, what, what we saw uh, yesterday in the Kuramoto model, you have uh, this kind of a behavior as a function of epsilon. Okay, so here because I have a Stuart Landau, which is a bit different, the master stability looks like this. Okay, so this is uh, the master stability function. Here is the higher of the Kuramoto. So if you take now your coupling strength somewhere here, it is positive, so you cannot synchronize. If you take your coupling strength here, it's negative, then you can synchronize. So this is the largest Lyapunov exponent. Ah, sorry. Yeah. It, yeah this is net. Is network here? Yeah. Uh, no, not, not necessary. Because uh, you, you take the limit, so you, you take uh, the small perturbation, so delta, you linearize, you solve uh, a time independent equation, but it can or it cannot. In this case, it, it will not depend on time. Yeah? No, here numerically, I, I really integrate uh, the, the, dimension, the, uh, the linearized system with time independence. Because the, the variation is smooth, there is no. Okay, and yeah. No, because this approximation is good once the link uh, uh, oscillates very fast. Uh, here, there is no hypothesis on the how fast they oscillate. So this is a, a, a linear time variant system whose largest exponent is a constant for some reason, positive or, or negative. Okay, so but this depends really on the model because I choose the Stuart Landau, and indeed I, I think it's a trick because once you linearize, even if the Stuart Landau depends on time, the solution, the system is stationary. So once you write the Jacobian of this part evaluated on the limit size solution, is a constant. That is a tricky part, but is quite useful in the integration. Okay, so that's why it's a constant. Okay, so, uh, uh, so uh, 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 as I was saying, a time invariant network seems to be uh, more easier to be synchronized. So here is an example of this small one, but then we did an experiment with, with a very large network. I think there, uh, we, we took uh, 1,000 network with 50 nodes of 100 nodes that uh, oscillate in time, so do the same simulation, and we compute the difference between the threshold to synchronize once you are you're static, or the threshold that you synchronize once you are time varying, and you see that all these uh, deltas are all positive. So my conjecture is, it, in this case of time varying network, it's easier to synchronize in the sense that uh, the instability threshold is smaller than for the equivalent static one. So this is a conjecture. I cannot prove it, but uh, all the numerics that I did uh, seems to go in that direction. And there are other work in the, in the literature that say that uh, time varying network are in some sense more easy, easily synchronizable. 
Okay, so uh, what I show is true also for the Lorentz system. So here again, I put the one Lorentz system and I coupled the, the x variable uh, uh, with the same three three points, uh, three nodes system. And again, you can see that the static one is that line, and the, the blue one is the, the one that oscillates in time with some frequency three. And you can see that again, the blue line is pushed to, to the left. So it's easier sometimes to synchronize. And indeed, if you put a point here in the middle of the two lines, if you look on the static, on the time invariant network, you have synchronization, while if you look on the time invariant one, you don't have synchronization. So it seems robust also across the dynamical system, not just for the Stuart Landau. Okay, this has been extended to the case of hypergraph or simplicial complex by myself and some colleague, and some colleague also in, uh, mostly in Italy, uh, Stefan Ezer, which is, uh, and then uh, uh, recently with uh, Dibar Kargos and a, a student of him, we studied the global synchronization time varying high order stars. So you take an hypergraph that varies in time, and you can have a synchronization, yeah? On the chaotic order, yeah, of course, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, this is a case of a chaotic oscillator. And indeed, you can see that the, the vertical stripes are not equidistributed. You have this uh, chaotic behavior of vertical stripes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here yeah, you have three Lorentz system that uh, once coupled through this simple network, at the end they will behave as a unique Lorentz system on the uh, chaotic attractor, of course. So I say this, I say this. But now, so the last part of my talk, so the last 20 minutes, I will make the step further and study this global topological synchronization. So now I'm interested in simplicial complexes where the, the signals are not only on the nodes, but you can have signals on the links or on, on the faces, on uh, volumes and so on. So this is what I said at the beginning. Assume that you have a membrane, a triangular one that vibrates, but is in contact with another one through one link. How those two vibrations can interact and then can produce some emergent behavior. And what I'm interested in is to see when all the membrane will vibrate at the same time, or all the links or the nodes in some sense. Okay, so uh, here I have again my slider with the simplicial complexes. Uh, do you want to explain again, or do you think is uh, I don't know if everybody here is the, was also on Wednesday, so I can spend a few words. So yeah, so yes, yeah, so, uh, a simplicial complex is a, a, a union of nodes connected by links by forming triangles. Then you can put together triangle to form tetrahedra, and then you put tetrahedra together to form five uh, vertex, uh, uh, I don't know, a polyhedrum, some sense, uh, and then uh, you can go on, okay? And the important point is that uh, you should order these uh, uh, links or, 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 uh, or sorry, not, so you should orient those links or, or triangles and so on. And uh, one possible orientation is the one that is given by the node labels. So you decide that uh, there is some privileged direction from I0 to I1, from I1 to A2, or for I0 and A2. I repeat, this is not a directed network, it's oriented. It just has, uh, when in physics, uh, you have to study mechanics, uh, you, you say that this is a X, Y, and Z direction. So this is independent for your system, it's just you decide that way. You can choose uh, the orientation, uh, the physics the same, it's just the basis that uh, is different. So the projection in the basis is different. Okay. So this, uh, this orientation is interesting because uh, using this orientation, you can introduce this matrices B that tells you how, say, nodes are connected to links, how links are connected to nodes, but also how links are connected to triangles. And then how triangles are connected to links, how triangles are connected to volumes, and so on. So you can iterate. And the idea is that you put uh, one if the orientation of the nodes is coherent with the orientation of the links, minus one is this opposite orientation, and zero if they are not in contact. So if the nodes does not belong to uh, the links. In the case of phases, the same idea. You put one if the links is oriented in the same way as the face, minus one in the opposite, and zero if the link does not belong to, to the face. Okay? And so you can construct a lot of matrices. It depends on the dimension of your simplicial complex. Uh, once you have all the matrices, you also have the simplicial complex. It really a, a bijection between the two stuff. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, this example. You, if you have now a k-dimensional, so pay attention in the case of simplicial complex, k plus one object is a k-dimensional simplicial complex. So it's a bit different with respect to hypergraph, where in a, an hyper edge of, say, of size k has k object inside. Here, in a simplicial complex of, say, of size k has k plus one object. 
So if you think that a node is k equal to zero, you have one object. A link is k equal to one at two objects, the two ends of the, the links, and so on. So this is just a finish. Uh, what is important that uh, with all those matrices, you can construct another matrix. It's called Hodge Laplace matrix, which is the generalization of the Laplace matrix for network that now tells you how, say, faces are connected via links or via volumes, or, or, and so on. Okay, once you have all of this, the, the, la the, 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 the last point that we have to pay attention is the following, is that uh, because, uh, as, as I told you, if you uh, change the orientation of, of the simplex, then uh, you, you, in some sense, you change the basis. If you have uh, some function that, depend, that, is, that is evaluating the opposite uh, uh, simplex, then the function will take the minus the values of the initial function. As I told you yesterday, if you orient a link from here to, to the door and there is a current going that direction, the current will have values plus one. But if I change the orientation for some reason because I prefer from the door to myself, but the current will not change, the current is the physical stuff, the current will change the sign. But this is a, a fictive sign, it's not a real sign. Okay? So this is the, this uh, symmetry. And so this symmetry should be applied on the dynamical system. This means that you cannot do uh, dynamical system theory on a special complex unless you have uh, an odd function of the variable, state variable, because you have to, to change uh, the, the sign of the variable once you change uh, the orientation. If you change on, on, on the derivative on the x inside, then this is the only possibility that uh, everything is coherent. Okay, so at the end, we will end up with this kind of equation where you have uh, the evolution of uh, xi. xi is the variable on the membrane, so on the triangle, for instance. Then it depends on some inner dynamics. Time is this coupling. I take minus as uh, Wednesday because uh, we changed the, the definition of Laplace, but not never mind. And now you have again some nonlinear function, which is a coupling that should also be uh, uh, odd because otherwise you cannot respect the structure of the simple complex. And so the question is, let me take one reference solution, so the membrane oscillated with some pace, which is the solution of this equation. Is it possible that the, all the membrane oscillated with the same pace? So as we did in the case of the, of the network, we plug this information inside, and we have to say that this is equal to zero or not. While for the network, this is always true, for the simplicial complex, it depends. There are, comp there are simplicial complexes for which this equation is never zero, and the other which is always zero. So uh, let me now tr try to explain why. The idea is the following. So you have to solve this equation, LK, K is uh, your Laplace matrix, I, at times U, U is the vector with uh, all the ones in, in, the, in the column. You want to solve LK U equal to zero. Because of the structure of the Laplace matrix, sorry, here, no, it was a previous slide, sorry. Uh, you, you can prove that uh, LKU is zero if and only if BKU is zero and B transpose K plus one U is zero. This is because of the cohomology structure that we taught uh, also on Wednesday that in some sense relate the kernels of those two matrices. Okay, so now you have to solve those two equations. Okay, the first equation, so the BKU equal to zero, if you look component by component, means that uh, the, uh, if you take, uh, say, a, a tetrahedron, then you should have an even number of uh, faces. Okay, this is true, tetrahedron are four faces. So you can realize because it's enough to, to orient two faces in one way with plus plus, two faces in the other way minus minus, the sum is zero. Okay, because remember, BK is only plus and minus one. But if you take, in, for instance, a, a, um, a, a triangle, then the triangle has three links, so you can never ever zero by summing uh, two plus uh, one minus, three minuses, uh, two minus uh, one, and so on. So for a, for, a, for a triangle, this equation is never satisfied. Okay? The other equation is, uh, th so, this is so this means that you have this, uh, what we call balanced, uh, as in the directed network, you can have a balanced directed network. Okay? The other equation, that one, so uh, BK plus one, and then you have to show again that uh, uh, the I or the simplex, so the one of dimension K plus one, contains an even number of the smaller ones. As I told you, in the case of the triangle, that this is not possible. Okay, so here I have a, a small picture of what I'm saying. So if you take a, a triangle and then this is uh, the orientation that you compute to be two, you have a one minus minus, for instance, and then you make the product with the one, one, one vector, you get the minus one, okay? While if you take a, a tetrahedron, as I tell you, you can orient faces in such a way, you have one minus one, one minus one, and then once you make the product, you, you take zero. 
Okay? So this, is, this tells you that the first condition can only be satisfied on even-dimensional superficial complex. So zero is even, and so on the network, this is always satisfied, but not on the links, for instance. While the second condition, as I told you, this means this is balanced. This means that if you take a node, you should be as many incident link with plus and as many outgoing link with minus. Or if you have uh, this, uh, this link, you should have a, 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 an even number of incident faces. They are half of them oriented currently and half of them oriented incorrectly. So you have to, to play on this. So the question now is, uh, can we build this, this kind of simplicial complexes that satisfy both the conditions? Because you have to satisfy both the conditions at the same time. So let me, do, let me show some example. I take a torus, so not well but this is a torus that is uh, triangulated. So on the surface of the torus, I put the triangularization. So, so why this, uh, this interest? Because uh, let me do it that way. So this is uh, uh, a possible orientation of two triangles. And then you have... Uh, Okay, so I assume now that, okay, sorry. Uh, uh, so let me finish the picture because the, yeah. Ah, uh, sorry. Okay, so uh, what I said that if I take a torus and I make a triangular triangularization on the surface, I can orient the triangle in such a way the condition is satisfied. This does not mean that any uh, orientation that I give you is good. So you have to choose the good basis in some sense. And so here, if you think that now this side is the same because you are closing, and this side, the top, is the same and the bottom, you are closing. So this means that you are going in that direction, horizontal, and they are going in that direction, vertical. And then you have this... Uh, orientation that way. Now, if you look, for instance, at that point here, you have one, two, three exiting links and one, two, three entering links. Uh, sorry, I did some mistake. Entering links. And so the sum is uh, three times plus one plus three times minus one, zero. So, so ju just, so if, you, if you do it by periodicity, this is true. So this shows you that the one condition is satisfied. Then if you compute, for instance, you, you take this link, so the link goes from uh, uh, um, uh, right to top or, uh, left. And you see that this is currently oriented with this triangle, because, but this is incorrectly with the other one. So these links contribute to plus one to this triangle and minus one to the other one. And so the total sum, once you multiply by all the ones vector, this gives you zero. And this is true for all the links that you can produce. So uh, this means that uh, I can show, this is just a uh, a rough proof, but I can show that there is an orientation on the triangularized torus such that uh, this condition is satisfied. Okay? So this is satisfied, the first one, but not the second one, because as I told you, you cannot have the total sum on the triangle equal to zero. And indeed, if I run the simulation, So if I run the simulation, you can see that after some point, the link, so the, here the dynamics is on links, the links will not synchronize. Each link will oscillate with a different pace. And you can see from here, so it is the same plot of the variables on links as a function of time. You don't have vertical stripes. You have this kind of patchy. But if you look at the maximal Lyapunov exponent, it's always negative for all the values of the spectrum. So the point is that you don't have the... Uh, invariant uh, synchronization manifold here because uh, you cannot verify this condition. Okay? If now I, I take the dynamics on the face, so the same uh, uh, torus with the triangles, and that I'm interested in the dynamics on the membrane, so on the, on the triangles, now you can see that you oscillate at the same pace. So all the membrane, all the triangle pulse with the same frequencies. And again, you can see here you have vertical stripe, and again, the mass stability function is always negative. So if you just look for the mass stability function, you cannot see the difference between the two. But if you look more carefully, because now the two conditions are satisfied, then you have a synchronization. So it's not enough in some sense to look at the mass stability, so the maximum Lyapunov exponent. You also need this uh, 
topological condition or geometrical one, algebraic, it depends if you like algebra or geometry. So you have to some constraint to be considered. Okay? So here's an example where I have only uh, surface links and nodes. Can we go a bit far? So we can also have volumes. The answer is yes. And we build this kind of uh, very strange simplicial complex that we call a waffle. First, because I'm from Brussels, and in Brussels we eat a waffle, and then because it looks like a waffle once you look it. So there is that, uh, again, you have this, this junction of pyramids. I can just show you an example. Yeah, you take... Uh, uh, this is one basic block, and then I put here another pyramid. I don't know if you can see the picture. So you have one pyramid here, one pyramid over there, and they are connected through one link. Okay? And then you repeat, you put another pyramid here, and so on. So you have one stripe of pyramids, we have a second array of pyramids, and that is uh, what I show here. And then you close on the two directions. So you have a torus like, but it's not a torus, it's, it's a, some two periodic structure that you build. Okay, and now if you compute again the matrix B, now it's a bit more cumbersome, but you can do it. You compute the matrix B, so you can see that if you're interested on, uh, on faces, so faces you have to look the B2 and B2 plus 1, so B3 equal to 0, and both are satisfied. While if you look again to links, you have to look for B1 and B2, then the second one is not satisfied. Okay, and indeed if you look the matrix a bit are negative, but the raster plot are different. And then I can show you the evolution here, so I just two patches of my, of my wall uh, simplicial complex. And you can see that uh, the face will oscillate at the same pace, while if you look at the uh, links, uh, each link will oscillate with a different pace. So, so this is a, a, a numerical proof of what we are showing here. Okay, so because my time is over, so here is the how you can compute the matrices B for this waffle. Uh, so this is the construction that is happening. And so this is the, re the, the representation. So you have uh, this block. These are two, uh, two pyramids sometimes seen from the top. You have uh, a lot of pyramids, one oriented plus, one oriented minus. You put together and you do the computation. At the end, the matrices B2 and B3 are satisfied, satisfied the condition. Okay, last point and I finish. This is not true if you pass to cell complex. So cell complex is a, a generalization of simplicial complex where instead of triangles, you can have a square, pentagon, whatever you want, and then you have higher order structure. In this case, you can prove that uh, there are no constraints, there is no topological constraint on the, the uh, cell complex. Here I take uh, a three-dimensional torus, this is so a, a, a cubes that are put together and then in a periodic way in the three dimension, and then you can always find <coughs> Sorry, an orientation of the faces, of the links, and the volume, and so on, such that all the conditions are satisfied. And indeed, if you look for the evolution on the faces, also on the square of the, of the cube, or on the, on the links, you always have a global synchronization, of course, if you put the good parameters. Okay, so that's all. So there's an example. So these are just two videos that I can let run at the same time. So here are the same example as before. I have a torus, where now it's not covered by triangles, but covered by square, if, even if my square looks like rectangles, but that, never mind. And then you can see that you have a synchronization, global synchronization on the links, but also global synchronization on the faces. So there is no constraint. Everything goes well once you use uh, cell complexes. Okay, with that, uh, I thank you and ask you if there are some questions. Thank you very much. It was very nice. We have time for, for some questions. Any questions? Oh, yeah. OK, congratulations for the presentation. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, it's going, uh, my question is going back to the, the, the master stability function that you, the, uh, she have asked during your presentation. Uh, in a sp some special case, or? No, in the beginning, when just, we just presented uh, uh, that one. The okay, sorry. Yeah. That, that one? Later, like the, uh, this, uh, this one. Just back. Okay, this one, yeah. yeah. Uh, the black curve, you have fixed some epsilon for the time varying network. Yeah. And then you have computed the mass stability function. But my question is you have a time varying, varying structure, network. Yeah. And for each time, 
you assign different uh, couples, I would say, the, the AIJ. Yes, so there's yeah. latent time with this uh, function here. Yeah, and, and they are periodic. That yeah, they are periodic, yeah, yeah. So why, why don't you have like a family of these black curves? Because, I mean, for each time, you assign different uh, gains, I would say, IAJ. But you have only one curve, the black curve. Yeah. Which so one is this? So the, the point is that here, uh, um, so in a general way, uh, here I'm solving this kind of equation. So you have a linear time variant system, okay? And I'm looking for the lap of lap of exponent of this uh, system, okay? So this captures at the same time the Jacobian evaluated on the limit cycle and the fact that the links vary in time. So to compute the, the lap of exponent, I just take a lambda which is the limit times go to, to infinity of the log of the norm of x that t divided by t. Sorry. So here I, I, you lose the time dependence. The, the Laplace exponent is all positive or negative or, or zero. So that's why there is only, of course, everything here depends on epsilon. So I have a solution that depends on epsilon. That's why my Laplace exponent depends on epsilon. Okay, so that's why, so this means that I fix epsilon, I integrate my system, and I got for all epsilon one point of the dark, the black curve. I do the same with fix alpha, IA, this is easier, but it's the same procedure. You fix epsilon, and for each uh, epsilon you compute this one, and you get the, the red curve. The red curve has a zero larger than the, the black one. So this means that you need a larger epsilon to synchronize the uh, static network. I think there was a question there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, so the condition on, on the matrix is B. It's a condition for the existence of the collective solution, right? It's a necessary condition. Yeah. yeah. So if that exists, then you can analyze the master stability function. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So in the case it doesn't exist, it doesn't even make sense to look at the true. stability function. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's true. Yeah. yeah. It's a necessary yeah. condition to start, and then you have the parameters condition, the usual right, one that yeah. you can have for the stability. Yeah. And in the case of the cells, uh, they all have an even number of everything, right? That uh, it, it depends. That if you take a, a pentagon, no. Ah. Uh, it depends on which kind of cell ah. complex you are building. And it, and it also works for... We didn't do the computers because ah. it explodes the complexity. So, for, so if you... So for the simplicial complex, what is easy is that you only have triangles, etc. For the the cells in the, in the square, you only have uh, square, cubes, hypercube, right. but the same structure. But if you start to mix uh, triangles with a square, it, it already is difficult because maybe right. you can have some strange construction uh -huh. where the minus is of the triangle is compensated by something else. So if you know also allow for pentagon, is much more complex. Uh -huh. So it can be done, but we didn't because okay. the complexity uh -huh. explodes in okay. some sense. But your conjecture is that it's always going to synchronize in these cases, or you don't know? N uh -huh. It depends on the, on the dimension. If you take pentagons, I will bet that it's not possible, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, as for triangles. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, for this case and for the Lorentz one, do you, it looks like you can collapse these two curves onto a universal one. Uh, by rescaling uh, the coupling. Do you know if this constant uh, exists? Ah, good, or good idea. I, I didn't try, I'm not sure. I, 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 I don't know, so I don't know the answer. Okay. Well, what I, I, I try to prove that uh, this root is always more than the other with some mm -hmm. algebraic tool and so on, but I, I didn't try to do what you are doing because this understand well. This means that this rescale in some sense should depend on uh, omega, which yeah. is the speed, and then if, if you can prove that uh, in some sense, if omega is positive, uh, this uh, rescaling is positive, yeah. then you can, yes, I don't yeah. know, yeah, good idea. The, uh, the, the temporal case would be equivalent to the static one by a rescaling function. By some rescaling yeah. function, yeah. Okay. But then it means that you have to rescale uh, epsilon, the coupling. Yes, yes, yes. So you have, uh, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, sorry, good idea. So you have to rescale the coupling in dependence of time of omega. Yes. In such a yeah. way, you have an equivalent static system. Exactly, yeah. yeah good point, yeah. Okay, we have time for one more question. Hi, uh, I just have a, I got a little curious regarding the uh, the pyramid waffle structure. Yeah. You said I don't know if it make a difference, but 
What if you connected them by the faces instead of by the links? Have you tried it? Does it make any sense? Would you expect it to be different? Okay, of course it makes sense because uh, this is just one possible choice. But if you uh, if you touch the two pyramids by the faces, then uh, you will have different matrices B, first of all. Uh, I'm not sure that the condition is satisfied. So what is uh, interesting here is, is so in some sense, if, if you are interested on faces, this uh, uh, simplicial complex is disconnected because uh, two tetraeda are connected to something which is a very small dimension, a link. Uh, and while if you put uh, two faces together, they are connected because they are of the, with minus one dimension. Uh, and so uh, everything changed. Uh, I don't know if you can build a simplicial complex that satisfies those two equ equations by uh, gluing on, on the faces. I don't know. We, we have to try. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, good. Let's thank uh, Timoteo again.